If you missed the first of four public office candidate debates on MTN this morning, don't worry, our Jonathan and Barry will break down the highlights. Plus, with the rise in uncertainty during the pandemic, are more people joining churches in Montana? We'll tell you. And later in our Montana Ag Network feature, the Montana Stock Growers Association recognizes a ranch in Martinsdale with their annual Environmental Stewardship Award. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Thanks so much for spending your last Sunday night in August with us. I'm Matt Holzaffel. Earlier today, MTN broadcast the first of four debates between candidates running for statewide offices that haven't received as much attention during this election season. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has more on the debate, featuring the major party candidates to lead the Office of Public Instruction. The election for Montana Superintendent of Public Instruction is the only statewide race this year that's a rematch. Republican Elsie Arnson defeated Democrat Melissa Romano in 2016. Both candidates are running again this year, and MTN recently hosted them for a debate. The debate aired on MTN stations statewide Sunday morning. Arnson said her experience makes her the best choice to advocate for schools during a challenging time. It's very challenging. If you don't have a relationship built with the legislature, and I have had one over 14 years now, making sure that their promise to fund our public schools does occur and making sure that uh, their stability is put back in to our school board rooms where they can fund our public school teachers. But Romano said she didn't believe Arnson had been forceful enough in support of public schools. Every student in our state deserves a leader at the Office of Public Instruction, someone who's going to show up and advocate for them. So I will be very present at the legis legislature, and I will be advocating for bills that would benefit Montana students. I will be opposing bills that are detrimental to Montana's public school system. Romano said one of her main priorities as superintendent would be supporting public funding for preschool. I know how important it is to reach and intervene early in a child's life, and public preschool is its absolutely time that we invest in public preschool and our young learners. We know that it will benefit long beyond when they're five and six, well into when they're adults. Arnson said her office has put effort into improving student readiness, and she wants to keep focusing on that. This begins in middle school. You know, we can add a brand new cohort of students, but those other children are left behind. And let's, let's invest, not only invest in our children, but let's have a more robust conversation with our private partners. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. If you'd like to watch the full debate, you can find it on our website. Now, next Sunday, M10 Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison will host a debate with the two major party candidates running for state auditor. Less than 100 new coronavirus cases reported in Montana since yesterday. That puts the state at just under 2,000 active cases, with almost 7,400 total cases. Cascade County reporting 114 active cases, 280 total. Lewis and Clark County showing 40 active cases, with 196 confirmed overall. You might have noticed more open seats than usual this morning as you made your way to Sunday service. Great Falls pastors told our own Lindsay Hyatt that's because more of their congregation is attending church from home. In recent months, Great Falls pastors have noticed fewer attendees in church and more attending from the comfort of their couch. We're running about half our uh, general attendance um, that we were running before COVID, but we do have a much larger online presence than what we have had in the past. Despite less people attending in person, Victory Church pastor Gary Hart believes the church has actually gained members. Honestly, I think our membership has increased during this time, uh, primarily because we do have a lot more people who are uh, using the online presence, but we've also seen an increase of new families, new members uh, over the course of the last several months, people coming and being a part of our, our services. Pastor Eric Crawford says New City Church has experienced a similar change as their weekend service size shrinks and their online engagement grows. Although our services have been a little bit smaller than what we would typically see during this time of year, uh, our online presence has been um, pretty healthy. And both pastors say they've seen new membership on the rise. Uh, but we've also just had an increase of a, a lot of newcomers. In fact, the very first week that we opened back up, there was quite a few people who were brand new. A change they attribute to uncertain times 
and certain faith. We believe that people are looking for hope, and so when they come to church, that's what we want them to find. I think in a world that they're surrounded by a lack of hope and there's a lot of desperation, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of questioning, um, to find something that brings stability to life is really important. So they have hope to hold on to if this period of uncertainty is here to stay. In Great Falls, Lindsay Hyatt, MTN News. What's now? Hey, Grant. Hey, uh, Matt, and that's exactly right. The clouds are moving in from the northwest, and that's going to be the continuing trend as we head throughout the night with the increase in clouds. And we are looking at uh, our rain chances relatively kind of low for much of the area. They're going to stay south of us and uh, mainly impact Helena as those out towards the west. Temperatures not too bad right now. 50 in Great Falls, a lot warmer though in Helena at 60, 54 in Jordan, 53 in Glasgow. And our winds, well, 8 miles an hour in Great Falls, 6 in Helena as well as Jordan, and 8 in Haver. Overall tonight, temperatures are going to dip down into the 40s, so you might need a light jacket heading out the doors tomorrow morning. 41 degrees in Haver, 43 in Hayes, 44 in Great Falls, and 45 in Helena. For the Great Falls bus stop forecast, mostly cloudy skies in the morning as temperatures are around 45 degrees. We'll walk out, though, of school, mostly sunny, 69. For our friends in Helena, temperatures are going to be right around 48 degrees with a 30% chance of shower, so you might need to have that umbrella, but you won't need it for the afternoon as temperatures are going to be right around the uh, 64 degree mark. Some of us could see another shot of rain, not only for Helena, and we're going to have all those east hills and more, as well as our cooler temperatures sticking around. Back to you. All right, thank you, Grant. The University of Montana is up and running with classes using a combination of in-person and remote learning as it eases into fall during the pandemic. And UM President Seth Bodner says monitoring precautions and active cases will continue to be a daily occurrence, as MTN's Dennis Bragg reports. A powerful sight tonight in Detroit. 900 faces on billboards of lives lost to COVID-19, all for the first citywide public memorial. The photos lining a bridge where on Monday 15 funeral processions will be driving past to pay tribute to the 1,500 who died. Well, look at those faces that represent the spirit of Detroit. Louisiana, a COVID hotspot, is struggling with a backlog of cases as the governor warns that Hurricane Laura's destruction is disrupting coronavirus response efforts. And when you put them both together, it's extremely challenging. In neighboring Texas, Baylor University ordering 54 students to reside in place on two floors of a dorm after a spike in cases. At University of Kansas right now, nine fraternity houses in quarantine with 474 students infected. And the party's raging on at Arizona State University despite 452 cases among students. More than 200 on campus are in isolation. We find it um, sad and, and completely preventable. The controversy continues over new CDC guidelines with most states rejecting the recommendation for less testing. Well, the Montana Stock Growers Association recognizes a ranch in Martinsdale with their annual Environmental Stewardship Award. Our Montana Ag Network feature is coming up next. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Welcome back. In tonight's Montana Ag Network feature, Lane Nordlund introduces us to a Montana ranching family who was recently recognized for their work as conservationists and stewards of the land. Each year, the Montana Stock Growers Association's Environmental Stewardship Award Program recognizes a Montana ranch that exemplifies environmental stewardship and demonstrates a commitment toward improved sustainability within the beef industry. Recently, the Voldseth family of the TG Ranch, located near Martinsdale, was awarded the 2020 honor. Typically what we focus on mostly is the grassland because basically we're in the grass business. We only have cows as a harvesting mechanism. And so if you don't have healthy grasslands, you don't have much when it comes to ranching. The Boldsath family has been ranching in the valley of the upper Muscle Shell River for more than 140 years, working to preserve and enhance the land for generations to come. We rotate cattle regularly so it doesn't get overgrazed. Some of the place that the range wasn't in that good a condition, if it was suitable, we farmed it, seeded improved pasture species, and the production is probably 10 times what it was before. 
For more on the Environmental Stewardship Award program and the Voldseth family, visit the Montana Stock Growers online. We'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Lane. Filmmakers used a historic mansion in Butte as part of a short film project on, Shosh on a Shoshone chief. M10 John Amy talked with the director and one of the actors from Butte. Scene 11, Charlie, take one. Butte's Clark Chateau was one of the settings for a short historical film about Chief Tendoy and the Shoshone Indians. A local Butte actor was grateful to be a part of this project. Just something that I've never done before and I got a phone call and I was just really blessed to have this opportunity. Um, here, so it's, been, it's pretty nice. It's pretty cool to have something like this happen here in Butte. The Butte actor plays a butler to President Ulysses S. Grant in this period film about a meeting with Chief Tendoy and the President. Um, and it's all, I'm always willing to challenge myself and take new, take new roles and different challenges. And it's blessed to have an opportunity to do that here in Butte. The filmmakers chose the Clark Chateau for its historic appearance. Management at the Chateau were happy to provide the mansion. It's great because we take all of that money from that rental and put it back into the property. So it's not really a, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. You get a beautiful space and we get some more funding to help fix up the building. The filmmakers are delighted with the progress of the filming. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of gets you a little emotional. It's been challenging, but we've done it. The film is expected to be ready by next year and presented at numerous film festivals. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. The film was also shot partially in Virginia City, and some scenes will take place in Helena. The Cook Mansion hosted an annual craft show that is usually at a local elementary school. M10's Alexia Guayo tells us how this show adjusted in the pandemic to continue its support for local students. This craft show in Townsend features a lot of great work from local artists, but has come a long way just to be here. This craft show was supposed to begin at the start of summer, but the pandemic changed it all. The event coordinator said they've had to reschedule this event four times until they were finally allowed to hold the craft show Saturday at the Cook Mansion. Having dates change have kept vendors in the shadows waiting to sell their items. We had hoped to have done this in April and then maybe have one at the later part of the summer and early fall. And so it's really kind of pushed all of that back. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's affected, I think, most vendors. Despite the changes to the event, the event coordinator was determined to have a craft show this year to continue its raffle. All proceeds go to students at a local elementary school. Because the kids need it, the kids need it outside. They, you know, what this buys is equipment for the kids to play outside. Um, and with having so many kids in school, the equipment gets worn really fast and it's not that easy to be replaced. Cher serves as a substitute teacher and understands the pressure for schools to have enough equipment for students to last the whole year. The pandemic has put a toll on her craft show efforts to have it more than once a year. But like I said, it needs replaced often. So, and if you only do this once a year, you know, it doesn't really go that far. <laughs> the goal is to raise at least $250 for the playground equipment. In Townsend, I'm Alexi Guayo, MTM News. Donations were also collected for the East Helena Boy Scouts. Now, if you wish to donate to the school, our website will have the contact information. Well, temperatures tomorrow are going to stay below the average 69 in Great Falls, 64 in Helena. Your seven-day forecast is coming up next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Grant Garland. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you have had a pleasant Sunday evening. It was very kind of cool out there, and we're going to continue that as we go throughout the day tomorrow. Temperatures today got into the mid-60s, right around 64 degrees in Great Falls, 70 in Helena, and 60 out in Lewistown, 72 in both Glasgow as well as Jordan, and a lot cooler out towards Cut Bank at 61 degrees. Now, the average for Helena is around 80 degrees, right? So we were well below that. The record set back in 1999 when it was 96 degrees. Same year that Brandon Frazier took on the mummy. 
What an incredible movie that was. Uh, currently 50 degrees in Great Falls, 60 in Helena, 46 in Lewistown, 49 in Haver, and around 53 degrees in Glasgow. As far as our winds are concerned right now, not, not bad at all. However, though, earlier today we saw 31 mile per hour winds in the Electric City, down towards Capital 35, 32 in Cut Bank, and out towards Jordan, 37 mile per hour winds. We're going to see those winds continue to pick up for us on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now we have been looking at a few clouds that have been trying to uh, make their way for Cut Bank as well as those down towards Helena, and that will be the continuing trend as we go throughout the overnight hours with the chances of rain vamping up for pretty much all of western Montana. As we uh, go throughout the day tomorrow, we will see 10 to 20 mile per hour wind gusts, possibly even 30 mile per hour winds, uh, depending on where you're at. The breezy day again will come on Tuesday and Wednesday. We see our winds gusting from 30 to possibly 40 miles an hour, especially on Wednesday. Going throughout the night, clouds do uh, build in. Notice the rain though starts off right around 630 in the morning for those in Kalispell as well as Missoula. For the most part, we will see that try and uh, just clip the Helena area. Not expecting though uh, much at all, not even a possibly a few uh, drops of rain, but I don't think we're going to be able to pick up any tomorrow. Going throughout Monday night, we will see the clouds kind of break apart. On Tuesday, this model does suggest we could see a few more clouds than what we're really calling for. It should be a mostly sunny day on Tuesday, with the clouds staying off towards the north. Going into uh, Tuesday night, though, we do start to clear out uh, for our Wednesday. Now, as far as the next seven days are concerned, we are going to stay below the average tomorrow, quickly warming up to the upper 80s by Wednesday, then dropping down again on Thursday, 87 back into the 80s, and then we're going to steadily drop back again on Sunday to around 70 degrees. Now you can always stay weather aware by following me at meteorologist Grant Rowan on Facebook and downloading that free KRTV and KXLH app. It is free. Temperatures tonight 42 degrees in Hayes, 40 in Lewistown, over in Great Falls, 44, 45 in Helena. As we walk out the door tomorrow, temperatures are going to be right around 45 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Clouds do break apart though as we go into the late afternoon hours. For Helena, we are looking at temperatures right around 48 degrees uh, tomorrow. We are looking at pretty much staying cloudy by 10 a.m., 55 degrees, only warming up to around 64 by 4 p.m. Now, to, uh, overall temperatures tomorrow, 69 degrees in Great Falls, 64 in Helena, 66 in Lewistown, and 69 degrees in Hayes in the low 70s in Haver. We will see temperatures at 69 again tomorrow for us in the Electric City, 83 on Tuesday. We're going to be looking at winds 30 miles an hour possibly for us on Tuesday. For Wednesday, looking at 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Sunny skies though Thursday and Friday. Saturday as well should be a beautiful day. And then we'll have a chance for an isolated uh, shower or two on Sunday. For our friends in Helena, we're going to be looking at pretty much the same situation. A better chance for rain showers tomorrow. Windy day for us really though on Wednesday for Helena with winds whipping up to around 30 miles an hour. Sunny skies on Thursday and Friday. Matt. All right, thanks Grant. Well, the University of Montana is up and running with classes using a combination of in-person and remote as it eases into fall during this pandemic. UM President Seth Bodner says monitoring precautions and active cases will continue to be a daily occurrence as MTN's Dennis Bragg reports. It didn't take long after the resumption of classes before the University of Montana had its first case of a faculty member testing positive for the coronavirus when a teacher in the School of Theater and Dance was quarantined this past week. We're prepared for, uh, for the, the reality that uh, there have been and will be positive cases on this campus. And our goal is, is, is really to manage those cases, uh, prevent uncontrolled spread on, on, on this campus or in the community. In fact, Bodner says the response followed the initial guidelines established last spring. During his pre-recorded State of the University address last week, Bodner thanked the UM community for helping to establish those guidelines and plans for operating this fall, a plan that includes extensive COVID-19 tracking. What's that tracking process kind of like? Yeah, thanks. It is. You're, you're exactly right. It's a daily process. We have a coronavirus response team that meets daily and looks at a whole host of factors looks at city county uh, public health factors, looks at operational uh, capacity uh, considerations of the campus, meaning, you know, what is our, our, our status? What, what, what percent of our quarantine or isolation space is uh, on, on campus is utilized? You know, how, we, how, how are we doing for things like uh, our ability for custodial staff to effectively clean campus? How are we doing with things like PPE and disinfectant supplies? Um, we're looking at those things daily in conjunction with 
City County Public Health. I asked Bodner if there was a certain trigger point that could send UM back into a full shutdown, and he explained there's a complex of factors and responses being used. You know, it's not that there's one trigger that flips us back to the operational posture that we were in back in the spring. You know, there are intermediate steps, and, and we may over the course of the semester have to dial up or dial back certain things. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Coming up to do one job for 34 years, you have to be dedicated. Now imagine that amount of time in one of the most high-pressure jobs there is. After the break, we'll tell you about one Billings doctor who's hanging up his scrubs after over three decades as a cardiovascular surgeon. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. This week, tens of thousands of men and women from around the country gathered in Washington, D.C. for March on Washington. 57 years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. led his, civil mar his march for civil rights. Friday's march inspired by the death of George Floyd and recent events like the shooting in Wisconsin. Our Joe St. George was there speaking with those who felt they needed to be there, even during a pandemic. No justice, no peace. Marchers are here. I'm from Houston, Texas. From New Jersey. All over. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. To be a part of history. It does feel like the 60s. 57 years after Martin Luther King held his march on Washington, men and women by the tens of thousands are marching here again. I have a nice little scar from it. Has seven stitches. Andre Miller is here from Portland, Oregon. His scar is still healing from being hit with a tear gas canister there during a recent protest. It's not that, though, bringing him to D.C. It's his son. My kids get called the N-word. We want like a suspension or something. His 14-year-old son faces racism in school. Andre Jr. telling us today's speakers are motivating him to keep fighting. And just to hear their message is just so inspiring. Today's events taking place in the shadow of the Martin Luther King Memorial. We found Martin Luther King III speaking to a small crowd about how his dad be so proud. The only way we're going to ever resolve these issues is we have to do it together. But it's not just black men coming here to the National Mall in D.C. today. Men and women of all races here too, including moms. It's too much injustice. Beth Wagner is multiracial. Her sons are black. I'm always at Charlie fear that, you know, Gibson. they could just be at the wrong Pass place for a long time. Many people we met, though, want today to not be an end, but a beginning, telling us too many lives have been lost. Thinking about what my ancestors fought for and what they had to do for me to get freedom and what I'm still going through to this day. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. After more than 10,000 surgeries and 34 years of service to the Billings community, a legendary Billings Clinic heart doctor is turning in his scrubs for retirement. But as he goes, he will leave behind a legacy of change in both technology and knowledge. Andrea Lutz talked with Dr. Scott Milligan about a career spent holding his hearts in his hands. If it's true what they say, a heart is made to be broken. If you Google the heart, uh, it's, it's, it's Googled more than any other organ. Then okay. Scott Milligan was made to fix them. But I knew there was something great here. I knew there was something special. He spent 34 years working for Billings Clinic. We packed the family up. We came to Billings, joined Billings Clinic, and... Uh, and got to work. Working to build a rewarding career on the shoulders of some of the best heart doctors Billings has ever seen. Today for me is the day I left the arena and uh, I'm going to head up into the bleachers and uh, so I, I had a, a great day with my incredible crew uh, that, that helps helps with uh, every operation our heart team that, that we do. Then the most important job after actually operating on the patient is to go give the family the good news so I was with my uh, clinical coordinator and we were going to talk to the family and I walked around the hall and there was a lot of people uh, clapping their hands for me and uh, that's when I lost it. During his career, he watched his Billings Clinic evolved from a practice to a massive hospital, saw technology advance to make cardiac surgery more safe and efficient, and helped develop a specialized heart team. But it's his patients and their stories that will leave the biggest impact. A few months ago, a fellow came up to me and he said, uh, are, are you Dr. Milliken? I said, yes, I am. And he said, I want to thank you. You operated on my dad back in 1986. And I said, thank you very much. Thank, thanks for saying something. And as he walked away, he said, oh, by the way, he's still doing great. And I said, I said, how old's your dad? And he said, he's 95. And as he leaves the OR, he'll surely take heart in knowing Billings is his greatest career highlight. 
as I look around, I'm so proud of, of what we've become. When you, when you look back on 34 years of practice, uh, you get some perspective. And, and if you have perspective, it allows you to see trajectory. And, and I think Billings Clinic is on a great path. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Well, a chance for morning showers, but they'll mainly stay off towards Helena. Sunny and also windy on Tuesday, partly sunny skies on Wednesday as we warm back up into the uh, upper 70s on, uh, on Friday. We're going to be also looking at a chance for showers tomorrow for those in Helena, and that's going to be the best chance to see that. And then, well, most of sunny skies on Tuesday. All right, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your last day of August tomorrow.